let's talk about pathetic. Let's get to the real pathetic one. Um, I mean, you expect pathetic from Biden. He's pathetic. He always was, you know, and, and everybody knows it. It's not a surprise. But Elon Musk is going from pathetic to lower than pathetic. I mean, Elon Musk is, I, didn't, I mean, I, for a long time, I didn't like Elon Musk because of all the subsidies Tesla got and all of that and all this global climate change and all that crap. And then uh, during COVID, I guess my opinion of Elon Musk went through the roof, right? His, his refusal to close the plant in California, him telling the state to come and arrest everybody, including himself. Um, you know, his uh, shake the fist at, at, at the satellites uh, tweet. Uh, he just had tweet after tweet that were just really, really, really good, right? Just, just really, really good. Um, he then the Starlink and, and the Starlink with Ukraine, heroic, timely, beautifully done, amazing. And my re Elon Musk reputation in my mind just went through the roof. And then he was buying Twitter, and that was cool, and all of that. And then in three days, his reputation has basically sunk to below, I think, where it was originally. God. Now I've already talked maybe too much enough about you know, his proposed peace plan with, uh, between Ukraine and Russia, which is um, uh, ridiculous, right? And, and, and completely, uh, completely appeasing of Putin and complete capitulation. And, and basically just in the midst of a war, God, how pathetic was it? And, I, and I said, I've said, I think Jordan Peterson has gotten to him. Uh, and and because it, it sounds like kind of the, the the stuff Jordan Peterson's been spouting lately about the need for peace between Ukraine and Russia, and I am all for peace, but you have peace from strength, not peace from weakness. So it's 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 kind of uh, it's kind of uh, uh, you know really 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 horrible what he says. But then he managed yesterday to top that. Not in a tweet. I haven't seen a tweet where he says this. But this is an interview, interview, I guess, with the Financial Times. In this interview with the Financial Times, he's asked about China and Taiwan. And what he says is, we need a deal. We need to force the Taiwanese to accept a deal with China, which uh, is like the Hong Kong deal. We saw how well that worked. The Hong Kong deal, uh, two systems, one nation, where um, uh, Taiwan recognizes the fact that it's part of China, but it becomes the special territory that's self-governing and so on, just like Hong Kong was. And we need this because otherwise there'll be a war and otherwise China will be upset. Otherwise, we can't afford to piss off China. And, uh, you know, uh, Russia's bad enough, but now if we piss off China, that would be a complete disaster. And we need to appease the Chinese at all costs. This is what we have to do. So we actually have to have a deal. Right now, you know, we pretend that, uh, uh, you know, that Taiwan is, a, um, is an independent place, even though, um, you know, right now we're silent on the whole question. But for Elon Musk to just state that the Taiwanese should just appease the Chinese, just like the Ukrainians should appease the Russians, that the path towards peace, the path towards prosperity, the path towards success in life, and in foreign policy, and in the world, is through appeasement. I mean, there's some, been some great memes online that I've seen of, of Chamberlain and Hitler and, you know, what you, what you get from appeasement. But Elon Musk must know better. But not only in one week is he appeasing the Russians, now he's appeasing the Chinese. Now, I understand the motivation around China a little bit more, because later on in that interview, he also talks about the fact that China contacted him when he deployed the Starlink satellites over Ukraine and supplied internet access to Ukrainians, and the Chinese called him up and they said, hey, Elon, you're not going to do this in China, right? You're not going to launch satellites above China so that the Chinese people can have free, unfiltered access to the internet. We can't allow that, Elon. You better not do it. And Elon said, well, of course not. No, not in China. China, we don't touch. Why? Well, because I have a big, 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 big Tesla plant in China. It's my second biggest market. I, I, I build Teslas in China. I, you know, we can't 
can't do this. Can't, can't, can't put Starlink. We don't want to upset the Chinese government. God forbid. Yeah, all the Chinese called him. I don't know who called him. Somebody from the Chinese government called him. That's what Elon says. I, you know, I have no independent verification that this is true, but that's what Elon Musk says, that he was approached by the Chinese and told not to deploy Starlink. And he basically agreed with that. Basically agreed with that. I mean, God. So just as we were starting to view Elon Musk as, as kind of a heroic character, as, as, as somebody to stand up uh, to the authoritarians, uh, somebody who could maybe really shift people's thinking over social media, somebody who's not really associated with right or left in any kind of major way, just a disappointment. Just a massive disappointment. Starlink covers the entire planet, but you have to be able to connect to it. You, you, and, and, uh, and countries can ban your ability to bring in stuff. You can bring in stuff through a black market. Anyway, I'm just citing what Elon Musk said in the interview. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have an opinion about, but Starlink is not available in China, as far as I know. It is not available in China. Chinese do not have it. The, the Iranians, I think, do, uh, but not the Chinese. So while theoretically you could probably access it from everywhere, although I don't know because they're still deploying more and more and more satellites, ultimately it's supposed to be a global network with, with global reach, but I'm not sure it is yet. <sighs> yeah, uh, engineers tend to be very pragmatic and very utilitarian and not very principled. So sad, sad about Elon Musk. Yeah, it is what it is. All right. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.